got it. Okay, we gonna turn it. There we go. Alright, I'd like to start off by saying, Ko hello, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. And uh, it's gonna be another lesson uh, for Israel. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. You guys like to talk about the Bible today? No? Yeah. Alright. Well, in case you actually are invested in this Bible, do you know the uh, what's gonna happen to the so called white man? For the rape, robbery, and murder of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Bible says you guys are going into slavery. Did you know that? Yep, y'all are going to pay for what you did to God's chosen children. Walking up and down stolen land like you ain't got a care in the world. Just know, you heard it here, your judgment is coming from the Most High. And y'all are going to pay for what you did to us. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Yeah, buddy. But we're going to go ahead and uh, do a lesson today. Uh, today's lesson draws more for from the milk of the scriptures because uh, it's, it's just as important or if not more important to know the foundational principles of the Bible than it is to know the complex breakdowns and um, I'm probably the perfect person to do something that's uh, milk worthy because I'm a journeyman in the truth uh, but today we're going to be uh, basically covering um, who exactly is Esau and what is the nature of his association with us as Israelites so we're going to go all the way back to the beginning right so we're going to start, of course, in the book of Genesis. Just one moment. And y'all, it's quite windy. I'm going to try to keep my voice today, but, you know, if the spirit get on me, it's, it is what it is. How you doing down there, brother? Whenever you got a second, got a uh, chance to talk about the Bible? You don't? All right. Well, brother, you know what tribe you're from, right? from the tribe of Judah if your father's an American black man. But I'm gonna let you get back to your business. All right. But we gonna go ahead and start from the beginning. So we're gonna start in the book of Genesis, chapter 25. And you know what, we'll start at verse 21. It's the book of Genesis. Chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So Rebekah was barren, as the scriptures just said plainly. And, oh, how y'all doing? Guys, like talking about the Bible? We're good. Thank you. Y'all are good? Much. Well, y'all know what this Bible says about so called Europeans, right? The Edomites of the earth, y'all are going into slavery for what y'all did to God's chosen children. What y'all think about that? Oh, yeah, hey, that's that's a good attitude to have because when you're picking that cotton, we had that same attitude too. Just matter of fact, we in slavery, we broke God's laws, y'all going into slavery because you rape, robbed, and murdered his children. I think that's fair. It's going to be a good time. I'm going to love making postcards beating your back in, selling your children to auction blocks, just like y'all did to us. It's going to be a good day, and you're going to truly know what it's like to be at the bottom of the world. See, you Edomites, you speak lightly concerning oppression. You feel that there's no recompense coming to you. But rest assured, you are going into slavery for what you did to God's chosen children. But we're going to stick on the lesson today. But Isaac prayed to the Most High, and the Most High opened Rebekah's womb, and she conceived. Now, there was some, something special about this conception, because she didn't have just one child. She had two. But there was something even more special about these two children that she had. And we're going to read it. Verse 22, and the children struggled together within her, and, sa and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Most High said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So, at this point, you know, uh, Rebecca is getting a revelation from the Most High talking about the nature of these two children that are struggling together in her womb. See, that's one thing that, that often goes unsaid. The strife that's going on between the so-called black man and so-called white man is not new. This strife has been here since we have been a people, right? And the spirit of this, this contention has been here before either of us were a people, Israelites and Edomites, right? Abel and Cain. The spirit of Cain lies in these Edomites, not to mention the mark of Cain, which is leprosy. I mean, it, it's funny how when, when the so-called New Age Christian 
talks about leprosy, they talk about some type of disorder or disease where your skin falls off and you're covered in bandages. But if you leave an Edomite in the sun long enough, his skin's gonna fall off and his ass is gonna be covered in bandages. Like, it's funny how when we talk about leprosy, nobody looks at the white man as if that's him. But it's obvious that it's him when you look at the condition of what leprosy is and how it matches up to things like, you know, skin cancer, sunburns, rosacea, etc., etc. But let's go on with the lesson. So verse 23 was talking about how the two kids, our two children in her womb, are completely different. They're two manner of people. And one people are stronger than the other. What do we see now in today's world? The black man, hands down, the black, Hispanic, and Native American men of this world are stronger. I, I'm looking at a cardinal right now. These the God's uh, creatures are so beautiful. But, um, but black, Hispanics, and Native Americans are hands down more talented, uh, you know, we're faster, we're stronger, we're more, uh, we have more ingenuity and resilience. You know, what other people could go through, you know, the worst captivities and slaveries that this world has ever seen and come out smiling, still trying to make friends? That's us. Y'all got something to talk about the Bible today? If you don't, if you guys don't mind me asking, uh, who are your fathers? Who do your fathers go back to? We're Jewish. You're Jewish? Yeah. Oh, what tribe? I'm curious. Yeah, you guys from uh, Levi or Judah? Uh, I don't know. So what if I told you that I'm a real Judite? What would you say to that? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, nice. And what do you guys think about Yahweh Shai or so-called Jesus Christ coming out of the line of Judah and being a black man like me? Do you still do you still feel that you're a Judah, Judite or a Jew? Because Jew is short for Judah. You know that, right? See, the Bible talks about those who say that they're Jews and they're not but are the synagogue of Satan. You guys are of the synagogue of Satan, and your rule over this planet is coming to an end. See, we're starting to wake up, and we know exactly who you are. We know your people fund both sides of wars. We know your people. You're, you're the ones who started Planned Parenthood through Margaret Sanger. You people, you propagate evil all over the world, and we know who you are. You're Khazars from the, the tribe of Edom. You fake Jews are going into slavery. Oh, yeah. They, they got to run when the scriptures come out. But let's get back to it. But it's evident that the stronger people are the Israelites. And it's also evident that the weaker people are the Edomites. Of all the men on the planet, and I'm talking about of all nations, Israelite and heathen, the white man is at the very bottom. He's at the bottom when it comes to athletic ability. He's at the bottom when it comes to ingenuity. He's at the bottom when it comes to morality. He's at the bottom in every conceivable way. That's why Esau means wasted away as he. I shot you, right? He's a wasted away man. You can, you can say that Esau is the closest thing to a beast, a bipedal beast that this world is ever going to have, right? He's the closest thing to a man being an animal and an animal being a man. In some ways, he's indistinguishable from the two because I've had the displeasure of living with Edomites. And let me tell you, they are quite as filthy as they seem. But anyway, let's go on with the, uh, the lesson here. Actually, we're going to cover these. Uh, it's going to be 24 and 25. And when her days were to be delivered, when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and he, his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared him. So, it talks about the two children and how they were born. Esau came out first. And remember, the prophecy is that the, the elder shall serve the younger. And even more prophetic was the action of Jacob when he came out of the womb. He took hold of Esau's heel to symbolize that Esau is the, the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. All these things transpired the way they did for a specific reason. And that's to let us know who we are and where we stem from today as Israelites. But we, uh, like I said in the beginning, it's important to have that foundation. We need to know not only who the Israelites are, but who our chief enemy on the planet is, and that's the Edomites, and their progenitor is Esau, who was just born here. All right. Oh, and uh, just to be certain, yeah, let me let me cover that one more time. And this is going to be verse 25. And in the and the first came out red all over. 
like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So Esau was red when he came out. And one of the things that you that cannot go unnoticed is that they don't describe how Jacob looked when he came out of the womb, and that's because Jacob looked like everybody else. But Esau was the first so-called white man ever born. He was red when he came out. Y'all got something to talk about the Bible? We know about it. Y'all do? This to Revelation. Sure, have you read the book of Obadiah? You skipped forward a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. where it talks about the, the recompense coming to Edom. You guys for rape, robbing, and murdering God's chosen people. You're going into slavery. Remember that part? I heard about it. You did? Did you read the part in Revelation where it talks about the 12 gates on the kingdom of heaven? And that the names of the 12 tribes are on each gate. So if you don't have a name of a tribe, you're not getting in? Yeah. Y'all, I can't wait for y'all to go into slavery so we can do to y'all what y'all did to us. See, it's easy to brush it off now, but your country is falling down around your shoulders. And trust me, the men of the Lord, we rejoice knowing that our power is bringing this wicked kingdom to its knees. I can't wait for that first day. We hear whips cracking over your back, devil. It's going to be a great time. I can't wait to say get back to work. And I see y'all moving as fast as you can. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day. All right. But let's go ahead and get 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And his name was Jacob, and Isaac was threescore years old when she bared him. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. So when the Bible talks about the nature of Jacob and Esau after they grew, you can see the parallels start to line up, right? It describes Esau as being a cunning hunter. Who's the man who lies in wait, shooting down Israelite people and pretty much anybody he could put his hands on and get away with innocent bloodshed? That's Esau. You got something to talk about the Bible? Huh? You got something to talk about the Bible? Jacob, Jacob is described as a plain man, dwelling in tents. When you look at Israelite people, what's the one thing that we love to do? We love to chill. We love to kick it at the house, stay at the crib, and just relax. We tend to keep to ourselves, whereas Esau's a man of the field and doesn't keep at home. So he's always out and about sticking his nose in other people's business. That's why everywhere you go on this planet, there's a white man stealing culture, a white man stealing resources, a white man stealing something, even if he's taking the children or the people. But that's the nature of Esau. And the nature of Jacob is to just be a man that's overall perfect. Because the term plain in the Bible doesn't mean not having any discerning characteristics or anything that makes him special. It means he's a man that's basically overall complete, not desiring anything more or less. Y'all have, have time to talk about the Bible today? No? Are you guys familiar with what the Bible says about the tribe of Edom? Um, somewhat. Somewhat? I brought the Bible. Okay. Do you know who the Edomites are today? I don't. You know, it's actually you guys. The so-called European man. And the Bible talks about how the Edomites are going to go into slavery for, it, for what they did to God's chosen people. Okay. So there's a recompense coming for what you guys did. Did you guys know that? I don't know that. What do you guys feel about that? you think that's fair? Or? Really reciprocal and what has happened. 
guys wanted to show that you were sorry and remorseful for what your people did, there's something in the Bible that talks about that too. You can learn to do that. Um, you know, here it is. Oh, cool. Fair enough. One second. get more offended when an Edomite has the audacity to apologize. Because your apology with no actions means nothing to me. But the Most High knows the difference and it's not my job to discern that difference. But when they are, when they refuse to express any form of repentance, that's Esau being who he is. The proud man who neither keep it at home. But let's get back to the lesson. Let's say at 49, I gotta quit forgetting that. Y'all got a second to talk about the Bible today? No? Okay. Well, just so y'all know, the Bible does talk about the tribes that are on the earth today, all the people, uh, and that those people have certain tribal names. Do you guys know what tribe you come from in the, in the Bible? Are you? Do your fathers go back to Europe by chance? Like German, Irish? I do. Well, light, lightly, you, you go back to the tribe of Edom, and Edom. The, Edom, the Edomites. And the Bible talks about the fate of the Edomites uh, in the book of Amos. Was well, it good or is it bad? Uh, oh, it's very bad. Uh, it's as bad as we got from you guys. So, I mean, and, and you can see it's kind of fair. You know, you, yeah. you know the history of what happened between yeah. our people. And you know how God basically has judgments for people who put their hands on his chosen people. Mm -hmm. uh, in case you guys didn't know, uh, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's chosen people. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're the Israelites. And that's that's not just according to this book. It's also according to archaeology and history. Things like the Los Luna Stone that had Hebrew written on it that was found in Mexico and other stones like it that were found throughout America and the islands surrounding this place. So our people are God's chosen people. Just before you go, I just want to know, what do you think about, you know, basically slavery coming to you guys for what happened to us? Say so the Africans have enslaved their own kind for thousands of years before it came to America. Now, what if I told you that Africans and black men aren't the same people? Are Chinese and Japanese people the same people? They say uh, they're not, but they look the same. They look similar, but they're not, right? But it's the same thing with the African or African American male, so-called African, because we're not African at all. Africa was named after a Roman right. general, right? You're American. But I'm not an American either, because America was named after an, an, an Italian navigator named uh, Amerigo Vespucci. So, where's the old Vikings? Well, the Vikings was found. Well, the original Vikings were also black. See, you Edomites don't have a past. Your past has been nothing but stealing our cloud, just like today. 
Black men want to dance, y'all want to dance. We turn our cat to the back, your cat get turned to the back. Our women twerk, your women twerk. Y'all going into slavery, now y'all can copy us all you want. You can pick cotton as fast as we did. You can, we can sell your kids just like our kids got sold. Y'all gonna be just like us. Y'all, it's gonna be like looking in a mirror after that thousand years of captivity. It's gonna be a good time. Man. See, they, one of the things that they'll constantly bring out is that we sold ourselves. You know, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to really address it with that, that unrefined gentleman. But, you know, the thing about it is we're not the same people. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, the American Negro has salt. You know, the, 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 the Caribbean man has salt. The West Indian man has salt and flavor. The African man is sticking his head in cow's asses and, and washing himself and showering in cow piss. Like, that's the type of stuff that the authentic Hamite is doing. And they have all types of weird, you know, uh, things that they do, abominable things that they do, from, you know, practices that they keep with their cattle and livestock to, the, to their culinary practices to incestuous practices, to pedophilic practices, right? The wickedness, the wickedness that these heathen nations engage in, Ham is no different. Y'all got a second to talk about the Bible? No? Okay. Well, if your fathers go back to um, native Hispanic people, by chance, actually, if you don't mind me asking, where does your father go back to? Are you native Hispanic or Indian? Well, just know if you're native Hispanic, you're an Israelite. But if you go back to Chinese, Japanese, or so-called white men, you're going into slavery for the rape, robbery, and murder of God's chosen people. So get ready, y'all. Either repent or keep the law, or become familiar with your fate because it's coming swiftly. All right, let's get back on it. All right. All right. So. that is normally like left or arranged for the oldest child because the birthright that was going to be given to the oldest child was going to be the promises of the kingdom. How did Jacob come into that? We're going to read about it. murder of God's chosen people. What do y'all think about that? Don't y'all think that's fair? That you guys serve captivity for what you did to God's chosen people? How y'all doing, brothers? Y'all look like y'all got salt. Are you, do, does your father go back to a native Hispanic man? Sorry? Is your father a native Hispanic man from this land? I don't know my father. You're likely... My father is God. Yeah. Well, hey, brother, if you read the Bible, you're likely an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar if you're a Mexican. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. Become familiar with your uh, your lineage, brother, because, you know, actually, if you have a moment, the Bible talks about the nature of your people, being the hardest workers on the planet. I know, I'm a believer. Are you? Yeah. All right, we'll repent and keep the laws, brother. Good luck on your workout. Yeah, people got other things to do, but let's get it. All right. So, you know, here we find Esau coming in from the field, and he's hungry hungry to the point where he feels faint and you know Jacob is sitting there you know he chilling at the house cooking because you know that's one thing that our people do well you know we, we happen to be very excellent cooks and Esau came in he, he told his brother he was like hey man give me something to eat and we're going to 
see how Jacob uses this to his advantage. Right? Verse 31, and Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do me? So at this point, we're hearing Esau's utter contempt and disdain for his birthright. Because the thing is, this birthright, it still hasn't even been fulfilled yet. And we've been through captivity after captivity after captivity. And Esau was unwilling to be hungry for a couple of minutes. And he was willing to part with the promise of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, just to fill his belly. You know, the name of Esau, meaning wasted away as he, is not just, you know, symbolic in relation to his physical makeup. It's symbolic in relation to his decision making and his foresight. It's wasted away. He can't think of anything beyond himself. That's why he'll he'll willingly keep making say opioids, even though it's killing tens of thousands of people a year, possibly millions of people worldwide per year, one way or another through complications and direct effects. He's willing to keep producing plastic that's clogging up the, the world's waterways, including the oceans. He's willing to keep producing oil that is being spilled and dumped into the oceans as poisoning all the ocean life. He's wasted away in every conceivable way, including his behavior. So when you read about him essentially saying, hey, what's this birthright going to do for me now? I'm hungry. I'm about to die. You know, you can see that that's his character. And it's not hard to discern who Esau is today. But let's keep going. 33, and Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. So one of the things that you'll constantly hear these Edomites say is that Jacob stole the birthright. When it says right here, it was sold to him. You know, it's, it's, it's funny when Esau is made to take, you know, to keep his promise, it's, it's somehow robbery or some type of slight against him, but it's only because he's being, you know, mandated to keep his end of the contract. Y'all going into slavery. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna tell you every time you come by. And how dare y'all claim to be of my people's lineage. If you guys are Judites, I'm the queen of England. Because that's supposed to be the ruling class of the Israelites. You mean to tell me that you are God's chosen children meant to rule his kids? The people who can't go outside without sunscreen? The people who can't plant their own crops? The people who have the most congenital birth defects? You are God's chosen people? You are the synagogue of Satan. And you are being pointed out for what you are, evil white devils. We gonna get 33 again. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. So just to recap, you have Esau finalizing the sale. And not only did he finalize the sale, but he goes on to just basically like eat, get up and leave and just bounce. Like it didn't mean nothing. So let's grab that. This is 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So Esau looked at his birthright like, man, this isn't profiting me at all. I'm willing to part with it if it means that I can get a meal and I can keep it pushing. And that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. But see, it's funny. when when, And you'll notice this about Esau today. When the ramifications for their behavior begin to kick in, that's when Esau starts to like, sound all the alarms all the, you know, the, the alarm bells, and he wants to get up in arms and try to take something back that he willingly parted with. You know, he's doing that in today's world. If you look at all the economic world, uh, warfare that's going on between America and China, America willingly parted with their manufacturing base, and now they want China to play by their rules, but that's not how it works. Y'all got a second to talk about the Bible? Yeah. All right, well, if your fathers go back to so-called European men, uh, you guys belong to the tribe of Edom. And the Edomites are going to the slavery for the rape, robbery, and murder of God's chosen people. What do y'all think about that? Did you guys know that you guys used to actually castrate us as well as burn us at the stake? You didn't only do that to the American Negro man, but you did that to the Hispanic man. You did that to the Native American man. You purposely infected us with all kinds of diseases, from smallpox to syphilis. You put guns in our neighborhoods. You sow dissension amongst our people. But don't worry, Edomite devil. The judgment of the Most High is coming for you. And 
because you've dealt treacherously with others, when you cease to do, deal treacherously, we're going to deal treacherously with you. You're going to bring all of your wealth to our people and desire nothing in return except for a gracious thank you from us. Because we're going to be beating your backs in. We're going to be treating you like you treated us. All the lynching, the hangings, the burnings, God remembers all of it. It's just because the excuse of, well, I'm not my forefathers, that don't fly in the face of the Most High. Not only does he require that which is past, but the sins of your fathers. He's going to prepare slaughter for you. For the sins of your fathers, that you do not rise or possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. These Edomites, y'all are going into slavery for the rape, robbery, and murder of God's chosen people. we see in verse 34 is like I said, you know, Esau ate, and he just said, well, I guess I'm done here, and he left. You know, that's that's Esau in a nutshell. You know, how many inventions did Jake come up with that had no value until Jake wanted to make money? And as soon as Jake started to try to make some money, all of a sudden, here comes Esau trying to steal. Whether you're talking about Louis Latimer. Oh, how y'all doing? Got a second talk about the Bible? We're good, thank you. Nope. Well, if you guys come from indigenous Hispanics, did you guys know that you guys are children of God, according to the Bible? Indigenous Hispanics, you guys come from the actual tribe of Issachar, if your father goes back to an indigenous Hispanic. Did you know that? You're actually an Israelite? Hey, man, the Bible says y'all are the hardest workers on the planet. Ain't that the truth? I know y'all are the hardest workers on the planet, man. Ain't, ain't so. It ain't even a toss-up, brother. Yeah, hey, if you got a second, man, do you know the name of God before you go?
So he would drink a little bit in his eyes. Alright? But here's the important part.
see how uh, the fucking quarter of the world goes. I know it doesn't seem like that now because we're on the bottom of the street of the nation. But you're a chemo nurse. And what's going to happen eventually is all these people are going to be bound down.
we saw in Genesis 25, uh, Esau had already sold his birthright at the end of the chapter, and he basically despised it. But, one of the things that's important, and actually don't let me skip over this, um, is Mexican people, you guys are the strongest people on the planet when it comes to working. Can't nobody outwork you guys. Come back to your heritage and keep God's laws so you can inherit the promises and the blessings that are guaranteed for your people. See, the kids, they, they know. they looking back going, hey, you're right on that. It's the adults who shake their head and wag their hand at you and say they don't want it. It's a shame, man. It's a shame. But the dynamics between Jacob and Esau are not normal. And that's because Jacob is going to be stronger than his older brother. He's going to be the leader of his older brother. And his, his older brother is meant to serve him. Right? Now, knowing that, when it came time for Isaac to pass away, as he grew near death, he, it was a customary thing for a patriarch before they died to give blessings to his sons or even his daughters if he had no sons. But he would uh, he would bless his sons and then he would pass away knowing that his estate and all of his belongings were guaranteed to his family and to stay within his family. It's, it's not only a way to conserve wealth, but it's a way to, to establish blessings in a sense as we're going to see here. But we're going to go ahead and go to Genesis uh, chapter 27. Rebecca, as the as Genesis for, uh, told earlier, 
she loved Jacob, whereas uh, Isaac's favorite son was Esau. And Rebecca saw an opening for Jacob to get the blessing, and that was to impersonate Esau, right? So while Esau is out hunting, you know, getting the, 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 the food or the, you know, killing the animals to prepare the food for his father, Rebecca's like, yo, go get me some, uh, go get me two kid goats. I'm going to go ahead and prep them up. I'm going to give you the, uh, the the savory meat, and you're going to take it in onto them, and basically you're going to pretend to be Esau. All right? And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Now, is that not true to this day? Wait, you know, you see an Edomite who looked like he basically has a sweater underneath his shirt. He's got so much hair. And Jacob tends to be a very smooth man. Yeah, we can, sometimes we have little hair. You know, we can grow beards. But for the most part, we're very smooth. We're not an extremely hairy bunch, right? And this is verse 12. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Unto me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me then. So, of course, you know, he went and he got the materials as he was told, right? And we're going to go to verse 16 because they had to come up with a way for Jacob to feel as though he was Esau. He had to feel hairy. This is verse 16. And she put the skins of the kids, of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. So all the areas that somebody who would be bedridden would feel upon to see if you were that person, basically they girded with the goat skin with the hair so that Isaac would think it was Esau. Y'all got a second to talk about the Bible? If your father goes back to a native Hispanic, did you know the native Hispanics are actually children of God in the Bible? Did you know that? That's not according to the Bible. The Most High separated the sons of Adam. And the heathen nations are like unto spit to the Most High God. How you doing, brother? You got a second to talk about the Bible? Well, brother, I see you in a rush, man. Do you know what tribe you come from in this book real quick? All right, well, brother, you from the tribe of Judah. If your father's an African-American man. That's the same tribe that Yahweh Shai, Christ, Jesus Christ sprang out of. Learn your heritage and repent, brother. Keep God's laws. Y'all out in the open with masks on? I, I don't understand that at all. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and get this lesson. So we're going to go to uh, verse 18. And he came unto his father and said, My father... Indian? That would make you from the 
tribe of Gad. Did you know you're actually an Israelite? And your ancestors would be rolling in their graves if they saw you walking around with the same man who raped, robbed, and murdered your forefathers. Out of all the men of the earth, you chose the man who's not only destroying the planet, but is still pushing your people on reservations. Wake up, sister. Repent and keep God's laws. We're not supposed to be making marriages with the heathen. We're not supposed to be producing these confused children who don't know where they belong to. See, it's funny. She had all the attitude for me just wanting to talk to her about the Bible. But she's walking around with a damn white man who's still rape, robbing, and murdering to this day. But see, a lot of our people, they're going to get a rude awakening when Esau finally takes this velvet glove off of the, the iron fist that he's been hiding from. said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of a field, which the Most High hath blessed. Therefore, give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. Is this not the, the blessing that Esau is seeking after today? He's seeking after dominion of the whole earth, attempting to force every nation to serve him, to bring tribute unto him? Does he not go around the globe with the sword, forcing every nation to bow or be killed, to be occupied and invaded? That's Esau. But the promise of the rulership and righteousness wasn't made to him. It was made to his brother Jacob. Right. But we're going to keep going. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And, all, and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless thee. That thy soul may bless thee. So I, and Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. So basically, Isaac just told him, like, man, like, yo, somebody was just here, and they said they were you. They brought me venison just like you would have made me, and I ate, and I blessed him. Like, he basically told him, like, man, the, like, like the, the, the blessing gun, the clip is empty, bro. Like, I already, already, already let that loose, man. Your brother got the blessing. All right? And when 
Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me even me also, O my father. So one of the things that's not stated here is that there is not just one deception going on. It's not just Jacob impersonating Esau to get the blessing. Jacob is impersonating Esau to procure the blessing that Esau sold to Jacob. Notice that nobody is, is saying, hey, didn't you sell your blessing to your brother? No one is saying that because I'm willing to believe, just like the white man of today, he figured that was fine printing in the details. Nobody can prove it, so I'm not going to tell anybody. And when the time comes, I'm going to take this blessing and I'm going to keep it pushing like I always have. But the most I rejected Esau, and he put everything in place so that that would happen just the way it did. serve in the kingdom of heaven though how do you feel about that it's okay huh okay well all right well shit as long as y'all on y'all stuff i'll be i'll be a kind master as long as y'all doing the work i don't mind that at all all praises they know who they are see these other nations know who they are it's blacks hispanics and native americans we're the ones who don't know who we are we're the ones still calling ourselves by every proverb and byword that the white man put for us and the white man Every time he hears you call yourself black, Mexican, Jamaican, etc., he chuckles to himself because he knows these niggas don't know who they are. That's what he says to himself. Like, not only do they not know, the, know who they are, but they don't know the promises that are supposed to come to them. And if they don't know the promises, if they don't know the laws to keep or the name to call upon to entreat the Most High to help them, then they're never going to get away from us. They're never going to get from underneath our foot. Oh, 
not God. Yeah, no, it's God. It's Yahweh. And uh, Jesus Christos, uh, it's Yahweh Shai. That's his name. Yahweh Shai. But anyway, y'all have a good day. I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. I wish I knew more Spanish. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, man, just do what you can. Do what you can. <laughs> well, let's get back to it. God doesn't dwell in churches made with hands. That's in the Bible. I know that. No. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I think I, I think they're with IUIC. Uh, okay. Did they have purple and gold? Yeah, yeah. That's that's probably IUIC. I know they're. I'm just my. I'm by myself. Thank you. 
you know, according to the Bible, when you do that, you're supposed to be put to death. And then, uh, uh, it's like, like the one in Australia also, they have All those churches, man, they're set up to lead our people straight. Because you know how we got, like, when the Spanish conquistador came over here? I believe there's a God that just don't know. I know that. I know that. Yeah. So what has happened with the Bible is a lot of it. When they have the Protestant Reformation, they took 14 books. Well, actually, they took more out. But the, the books that were, uh, have you ever read the 1611 King James, where it has all 80 books, the Apocrypha, and then the Old New Testament? I, I would definitely recommend looking at it. I, 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 I think, I mean, from what I know, from what I believe, I think it's just books. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I read King James a lot. I didn't read it all, but it has it. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, so all this is, this is just the 14 books that they took out. Let me grab something real quick out of that. It's going to show you the reason why they took it out. So one second. All right. What are you doing just here on your own time? Oh, yeah, brother. So the Bible tells us to cry aloud and spare not. You know, I'm supposed to wake up my people. You're my brother from the tribe of Issachar. You know, so I'm out here for you. And then the, the so-called white man who stole your land, I got to let him know that there's going to be a judgment according to the most high God.
was like a silent way to affirm yeah, that we were both dead. Okay. Last time I was out here, man, I was sweating crazy, dude. People thought I was dying. I was like, yo. Trying to give me money and stuff, bro. Well, it's. <laughs> they do that to me, just like, when you're in the wheelchair with the bag of the puppy, I guess. Are you going to home with this? I'm like, no, bro, I'll take that shit. He goes, hell no, I can't go So it's this, uh, they're, they're, the group is called, so I'm going to write the group. Uh, it's called 
Safari. Actually, let me start. They try to talk, and I'm just like, uh, Jesus Cristo, no, it's Nick, or no, it's Blanc. It's um, Nick. No. You know, oh, hold on one second, brother. How you doing, man? All right. oh, did you guys have a second talk about the Bible by chance? down a few other things for you. So you know the name of God, right? Have you have you ever heard of the Tetragrammaton? So the, it, no. So it, it's based on the Tetragrammaton. So Yahweh, have you heard that? Yeah. So the Tetragrammaton, the only phonetics that were present at that time in Pedo Hebrew were like Yah, Shah, La, stuff like that. Uh, the U didn't exist, the J didn't exist, so his name couldn't be Jehovah. You know what I'm saying? It uses a bunch of phonetics that didn't exist. Yahweh is the same way, because the way is not present. But Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. So the name of God. Brother, I barely got out of high school. <laughs> but that's but but that's because you know I'm i like you like you notice my people don't like to listen. I used to be like that too. I thought learning was an adversarial thing, you know, like you're trying to teach me. It was my job to resist you as hard as possible, which is stupid. But Oh, okay. Well, what happened? 
focus and stuff. stuff up and I'm out here every Saturday. Usually I get here around two, sometimes a little later, man, because you know one, one thing that I gotta work on is my punctuality. But um definitely look that up and <laughs> roll the shade and plus I know people gotta either come up or go down. Because you know as soon as you start talking about the Bible man, people are trying to jump around. Well so like when when people finally start because like you notice like almost nobody's here. Like when I first started coming over here every Saturday, this place was hot. And now that I've been here a little bit, when I come out, everybody just leaves. So now it's going to be kind of deserted. Uh -huh. So. stuff up brother I'm gonna be here every Saturday all right man Mexicans, you're actually, you go, uh, go back to the tribe called Issachar. 
basically raising up his men, his prophets, to remind them, our people, like you in your case, you're not mixed. You know what I'm saying? Like you're in you're in Issaco, you're in Israel, from the tribes of you know, the Israelites of all tribes. So you're not just the first, you know what I'm saying? You're special, you're king walking the earth. Right? But let me write this down because that's a hard.
about uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to have four gates. Have you, read, have you read that before? Come here, brother, let me read it to you. So this is Revelation uh, chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. This is going to...
Peter James was a thousand years old. So his name can't be Jehovah. And God's name can't be Jehovah. Yeah, brother. There's a lot, man. God. Alright, brother. It's been an honor to give this to you, man.